In this video, I will show you a bunch of reasons why our tags are not firing in Google Tag Manager. And to make things even more complex, some of those reasons are not even displayed in the preview mode of GTM. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to the Analytics Mania YouTube channel. If you're new here, I teach people how to work with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So if you want to stay up to date with GTM, consider subscribing. So you have implemented tags in Google Tag Manager, but they don't behave as expected. Maybe they don't fire when you need them to, or maybe they fire way too often. There are many reasons for that, and I'll share them in this video. So let's take a look. The first reason might sound very obvious for most of you, but this is actually the place where most of the beginners make mistakes. So the first reason why our Google Tag Manager tag is not firing is because maybe you have misconfigured your Google Tag Manager trigger. So now I have a demo property, I have enabled the preview mode, and this is a demo website where I will be testing my triggers. So here I have a tag that is expected to fire when I click the menu link. Now on this website, I have top menu and I have bottom link right here. So let's say that I expect the tag to fire on this link click as well. So I will click it and here I will see the link click. However, on this link click, the tag did not fire. So if you want to check why the tag did not fire, you have to first select the event on which you expected it to fire and then clicking the tag itself. So you will click it and here you will see that not all conditions of the trigger were met because this red X indicates that the trigger was not activated. And in fact, you can even check which part of the trigger, which condition was not met. So this is the problem that we're facing. It says that something should contain site nav link, but it did not contain. Now, the reason why I'm seeing this as an empty space is because I have switched to the values. Now, if I switch to the names, you will see the variables name and that is click classes. So click classes was supposed to contain site nav link. And if it actually contained, then this trigger would have fired. However, if I switch to the value, you will see that the value of that variable is empty. And this is happening because the link that I have clicked, it has no class. There is no class in the code. Therefore, click classes is empty and empty is not equal to site nav link. Therefore, this trigger did not work. So always check your firing triggers and make sure that all of the conditions are marked with the green check mark. But always do this kind of debugging when you click the event on the left sidebar first. And that event must be the exact event on which you expected your tag to fire. Now let's take a look at another reason. So here I have the same website, the same tags, and this tag is expected to fire when any of these links is clicked. So now let me click the first link. And now I will go to the preview mode. I will click that link click event right here. And for some reason, the tag still didn't fire. So as always, first I click the event on which I expected the tag to fire. Then I click the tag and I will see that all the conditions of the firing trigger were met. The click classes value, which is this one, contains this part. So everything is okay. We see all the green check marks right here. However, this tag also had a blocking trigger. And if you want to control blocking triggers, they are available in the triggering section of each tag. We have firing triggers and we have exceptions or also known as blocking triggers. So if the exceptions conditions are met as well, it gets a higher priority and the tag will not fire. So for example, here we have a blocking trigger and its condition is that if click text contains home, then this tag will not fire. Now, don't ask me why this blocking trigger is exactly as it is, because this is just for demonstration purposes, but it is totally possible that you will face situations where the blocking trigger is implemented. So if we switch to values, you will see that home contains home. So this is true. And therefore this blocking trigger worked well. Therefore the firing trigger was blocked. Now, the next tip is related to situations where the tags fire, even though you expect them not to. So here, I still have the same website, I have the same tag, but in this tag, I have a different blocking trigger right now. Let's say that I still expect this tag to fire every time a visitor clicks on a link, but there's a blocking trigger that says that if the page path contains blog slash news, I don't want to track these clicks right here. Let's take a look what will happen. So now I will click, let's say the first link, the second link, and then I will check the link click events in the preview mode. And on the first one, the tag fired, even though I expected it not to fire because the blocking trigger says that the page path should not contain this part. So on the first link click, it fired. On the second, it fired. So let's check. I click the link click. 
then I clicked the tag that was not supposed to fire and here we will see that the firing trigger conditions were met but the blocking trigger conditions were not met. Even though the page path actually contains slash block slash news as it is right here and that condition was met but the event value was not met because my blocking trigger is a page view trigger. So the page view trigger that is used as a blocking trigger will be evaluated only on that event which is defined right here. So the blocking page view trigger will work only on the container loaded event which is an equivalent to the page view. So if I had configured the tag to fire on container loaded but also the blocking trigger would be on container loaded then the blocking trigger would have worked. So for example if I had another trigger right here which is not the click but some let's see all pages then it would have worked because these two triggers are of the same type they are related to the same event which is page view or in other words container loaded but since I am using the click trigger right here but this is the page view trigger they are not of the same type therefore blocking trigger will not work and the click trigger will still properly fire. So this part is quite commonly misunderstood among Google Tag Manager users. If you want to use the blocking trigger, its type must be exactly as your firing triggers. And only then it will block the firing trigger. In this example, I'm going to click any of these menu links. For example, this one. Then I go to the preview mode and I click that link click event right here. So let's take a look what kind of tags fired. And I see the menu link click event fired so this was expected but also I have another tag which is sending an another event to Google Analytics 4 and actually I wasn't expecting it to fire so let's click it and see why this happened I click it and what you will see is that there are no blocking triggers the firing triggers condition was not met but the tag fired so why is it like that well the reality is that preview mode of Google Tag Manager doesn't show all the possible reasons why your tags fired or did not fire that is why in this case, you should go to the interface of Google Tag Manager and check the settings of this tag. Let's go to Google Tag Manager. Let's go to that tag that fired even though we did not expect it to. So I will click it. And here you will see that this tag has a firing condition, which is firing trigger, but also it is a part of a thing called tag sequencing. It says your tag will also fire right before these tags. And then this is another tag. This is possible because of a thing called tag sequencing. In Google Tag Manager, you can configure tags to fire before or after other tags. So for example, in this case, if I go to the menu link click, you will see that in this tag's advanced settings, there is a thing called tag sequencing enabled. So in this tag, actually before this tag fires, there is another tag that will fire as well. So even though this tag's regular trigger wasn't activated, this tag was still fired because of the tag sequencing. So whenever the menu link is clicked, this tag is fired. But before that happens, tag sequencing makes sure that this tag also fires. So always keep an eye on that. And if you don't want this another event tag to fire, you can just click this checkbox and tag sequencing will be disabled. Let's take a look at one more example. Again, I will be dealing with the menu link click tag. So I will click the first link, the second link, the third link, and let's check what is happening in the preview mode of Google Tag Manager. So I click the first link click and the tag fired. So everything is good because this is what I expected. But on all the other subsequent events, the tag didn't fire. Now, if I click on any of these two link clicks and then click on the tag that was supposed to fire, you will see that there isn't much information here because trigger conditions were met. There is no blocking trigger, but the tag did not fire. So again, we have to go to the interface of Google Tag Manager and see what is configured there. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, click on that menu link click tag, and then you will see that there is another option that is configured in the advanced settings, and that is tag firing options. Usually by default, all tags are set to fire once per event. So if a click occurs, a tag fires. If three clicks occur, then the tag fires three times. Uh, once per each click but it is possible that someone configured a tag to fire only once per page so if three clicks occur and all those three clicks were supposed to fire a tag the tag will fire only once on, on the first click so this is exactly what we have right here on the first click the tag fired but on the second and on the third click the tag did not fire because it has already fired once per page so if this is your case, then you should evaluate. Maybe you want to fire tags once per event, or maybe this is actually important and maybe that tag indeed should fire only once per page.
In this example, let's once again click the menu links right here. I clicked three links, and if I click on any of these three link clicks, you will see that the tag did not fire, even though this is the very same tag that was used in the previous chapters of this video. So I have link clicked selected, I will click the tag, and you will see that the firing conditions were met, but we have two blocking triggers right here, and one of them was met. Well, this is weird because I don't have any blocking triggers or exceptions marked right here. In fact, if you click on a tag, you will see that there is no exception. Well, these two blocking triggers are actually part of another feature in Google Tag Manager, which is called Custom Tag Firing Schedule. You can configure your tags to start firing on certain date and end on certain date. So for example, in this case, my schedule has ended because right now I'm recording this video past this date. That is why this condition was met and this blocking trigger blocked the entire tag from firing. So keep an eye on this part of the advanced settings as well. Also, if you open the tag, you will already see that some custom tag firing schedule is configured, if it is actually configured. So yeah, keep an eye on that. From my experience, this next tip is very rare, but I still wanted to mention it because, well, maybe you are dealing with this rare situation. So again, I will click this link in the menu or actually any link, then I click the link click event right here and surprise, surprise, again, the menu link click event did not fire. I click it and you will see that all conditions are met, there are no blocking triggers and there is no custom tag firing schedule. So what is it? Let's go again to Google Tag Manager, then open this tag and in the advanced settings, you will see another option, which is only fire this tag in published containers. So this means that this will fire in published live containers, but it will not fire in things like preview mode. This checkbox is useful if you are charged per every request that is sent by a tag to, let's say, some third party tool. But as I've said, from my experience, I have faced this maybe once and this is not very common. But nevertheless, keep an eye on this checkbox as well. And if you want the tag to fire in preview mode as well, you should uncheck this checkbox and then click save. And the final reason why your tag is not firing in Google Tag Manager is related to things called allow list and block list. It is fairly common for developers to not like Google Tag Manager because Google Tag Manager basically allows marketers to add various tracking codes to the site. And sometimes those codes can be malicious and break even some functionality of the website. That is why developers can configure Google Tag Manager to allow or maybe even restrict certain types of tags. And these can be done with parameters GTM allow list and GTM block list. Right now I'm looking at the official documentation. So if you want to learn more, I will post a link to it below the video. So basically how does this work is that your developers can add certain IDs to allow list or block list. And as these titles imply, allow list is responsible for letting certain tag types to fire and the block list prevents certain tags from firing. And this feature allows to narrow down to just certain tag templates, for example, maybe developers want to block things like custom HTML tags, or maybe developers want to allow control only Google's tags, like Google Analytics, Google Ads, but nothing else. So if you want to get more familiar with this, take a look at the documentations link below the video. And we might be wondering, how can you know whether this allow list and block list situation applies to you? Well, you can see that in the preview mode. So let's take a look. Here I have a new custom HTML tag that basically does nothing more than just shows a notification in the browser that says hello there. And this tag is set to fire on all pages. So on every container loaded event, this tag will fire. Now, if I refresh the preview mode, I would expect that notification or that alert to appear immediately on the screen. However, the tag did not fire. I click on container loaded, I click on this tag, but this was not fired, even though the trigger conditions were met. Now, if the developers have configured the block list or allow list, you should see a message somewhere in your feed right here. So here it is, I click it, I then expand this data layer push, and I can do that by clicking here. And here you will see that I have GTM block list. And right now, the custom HTML tag is blocked. In fact, if you copy this HTML and do a quick search in the documentation, you will see more information about what does this HTML mean and what kind of things are blocked if this is added in the block list. If HTML is added in the allow list, then some other classes or IDs are allowed to fire. In fact, if you take a closer look, you will see that when HTML class is added in the block list, it will block custom scripts. So now copy this one, let's do another quick search and you will see that custom scripts blocks custom HTML tags, also blocks this tag 
blocks this tag, a bunch of other tags, and even custom JavaScript variables. So basically, if HTML is added in the block list, you cannot use custom codes in your Google Tag Manager setup. I mean, they will not fire or they will not be activated. So what are your options here? Well, you could discuss this with developers because sometimes these are added not fully intentionally. So maybe you can talk with developers and maybe they will remove this. Or maybe you will just have to accept the fact that developers do not allow adding some custom codes to the container and you are just left with other types of tags that you can use in your setup. Or maybe you can negotiate and get permission from developers to use custom tag templates in Google Tag Manager. Because right now, with this configuration, you cannot also use tag templates in your Google Tag Manager setup. So for example, if you want to use the Facebook Pixel tag template, by the way, I went to templates, then search gallery in the tag template section. And if I use the Facebook Pixel template right here, this template will not work with the current configuration of the block list. Because if any rule is added to the block list, then custom templates will not work. However, if you take a look at the documentation, it says that if you ask developers to add this class to the allow list, then your custom tag templates will work. So instead of that previous block list configuration, your developers should implement something like this. Block list can remain as it is, but in the allow list, sandbox scripts class should be included. And then you will still be able to use a bunch of tags that are available in the community gallery of Google Tag Manager. All right, so I hope that this video helped you identify the reason why your tag is not firing in Google Tag Manager. Always start with the preview mode. It will tell you a lot of valuable information that is usually enough to find the problem. However, sometimes things get more confusing. You might have tag sequencing, block list, or something else. So keep looking. And if you are still stuck, take a look at my blog post below this video. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.